Right friends, welcome back to lecture session of uh, 26th week. This is from 22nd to 28th of June and from this week there is a slight change. There will be one additional module on questions and answers especially pertaining to banking awareness. That means in the current affairs you will have one lecture, one news analysis and features, one question and answers general and one question and answers banking awareness. That means one additional module will be there exclusively discussing about various questions related to banking awareness. They are current affairs related banking awareness questions and every week we will have four modules and the fourth module of current affairs banking awareness questions and answers is useful for the students whoever are writing banking services examinations right remaining three modules are useful to each and everyone but the fourth module of questions and answers of banking awareness every week will be useful for the students whoever are writing banking services examinations right i hope you enjoy all these uh, lectures every week let us look at the highlights of this week prime minister launches uh, flagship programs amrit smart cities and housing for all these three programs were launched by the prime minister of the country india pledges 1 billion dollars to quake hit nepal Nepal was devastated by 25th April earthquake and India pledged 1 billion dollars of aid at the donors conference in Kathmandu recently and the next important aspect is the prime minister emphasizes on second green revolution while laying foundation stone for Indian agricultural research institute at Bari near Hazaribagh in Jharkhand prime minister led emphasis on second green revolution other important aspect is the modern anganwadi center under nandghar yojana at hasanpur village in sonepur district of haryana next issue is e payments earn income tax benefits government released the draft guidelines when you look at the world events three terror attacks on friday in three continents attack on afghanistan parliament European Union launched operation against uh, migrant traffickers United States Supreme Court gave two landmark judgments one is same sex couples have a right to marry anywhere in the country the second one is the Supreme Court upheld the famous affordable care act of uh, Barack Obama when it comes to economy and banking Soft Bank of Japan, Bharti Enterprises of India, Foxconn of uh, Taiwan formed a joint venture. Oil glut for five consecutive quarters. The other important aspect is the SEBI relaxed norms for startups to raise funds. Raghuram Rajan cautions against competitive monetary policy. Look at another important event in sports and games. Satnam Singh Bhamra first. Indian to be drafted into National Basketball Association League Falcon 9 rocket explodes 3 minutes after take off and the last event is Department of Defense is the single largest employer in the world says the World Economic Forum report right so let us look at one by one First and foremost is Prime Minister launches flagship programs Amrut, Smart Cities, and Housing for All. Smart Cities was launched by the Prime Minister. Hundred cities will be developed. Each nominated city will get rupees hundred crore every year. Each nominated city will get rupees hundred crore every year. Out of this hundred cities, Uttar Pradesh is leading with the thirteen, followed by Tamil Nadu with the twelve, and the cities will be selected based on the 
two stage competition and citizens views will be taken into account and in the words of the prime minister they will be developed with the bottom up approach in the words of the prime minister they will be developed with the bottom up approach that means after taking into account the suggestions of the citizens of the country these the cities will be developed right 100 cities will be developed each year each city will get rupees 100 crores from central government look at amrut amrut replaces jawaharlal nehru national urban renewal mission or popularly known as jnnurm started by the previous government what is amrut amrut is atal mission for rejuvenation and urban transformation atal mission for rejuvenation and urban transformation this is basically providing the minimum facilities in cities smart cities is towards providing world class facilities in cities whereas providing basic infrastructure is the main theme behind amrut please don't forget smart cities is for providing the ultra modern facilities especially facilitating e governance in the country and each citizen is to be connected digitally that is the main purpose of smart city but the purpose of amrut is providing basic infrastructure in cities and towns because in our country basic infrastructure is lagging in several cities and towns right so here lot of reforms are required for implementing this amrut program and projects will be given clearance only after ensuring availability of land and the other important aspect is several reforms will be undertaken which include e governance fee or user charges gis based master plans and these are all part of the amrut look into housing for all prime minister also launched housing for all 2 crore houses will be built during the next 7 years in urban areas and the central government will give grant of rupees 1 lakh per each house and 6.5% interest subsidy will be given 6.5% interest subsidy or interest subvention will be given by the central government and the other important aspect is 2 crore houses will be built for economically weaker sections or low income group families economic weaker sections are the families whose annual income is up to rupees 3 lakhs economically weaker sections or the families whose annual income is up to 3 lakhs whereas lic or low income group families or the families earning annual income up to 6 lakhs of rupees please don't forget and this program to construct 2 crore houses by 2022 in urban areas the government feels that housing for all will be ensured by 2022 but a lot more needs to be done and we are going to discuss this issue in news analysis and features also look into the next issue india pledges 1 billion to quake hit nepal all of you are well aware in the earthquake which occurred on april 25 of this year nepal was badly battered more than 9000 people lost their lives more than 23000 injured and around 5 lakh houses were battered including several monumental structures and now donors conference was held and india pledged 1 billion dollars the highest ever by any country at the donors conference held at kathmandu this is in addition to the 1 billion dollars already committed by india under the bilateral development assistance with nepal so india committed 1 billion dollars at the donors conference this is the highest ever by any country right friends look into the next issue prime minister emphasizes on second green revolution the prime minister led the foundation stone for indian agricultural research institute at bari near hazaribagh in jharkhand what is iari iari is indian agricultural research institute the famous institute in the country which was established in the year 1905 at pusa in bihar with the magnanimity of henry phipps and subsequently in the year 1934 there was a devastating earthquake 
in Bihar and Nepal on January 15th, 1934 at the time the institute was badly damaged and subsequently this IARI was shifted to Delhi in the year 1936 and it is the reputed institute for agricultural research in the country. Now the Prime Minister laid foundation stone for Indian Agricultural Research Institute in the eastern part of the country near Hazaribagh in Jharkhand. In this connection, the Prime Minister stressed the need for modern methods in agriculture, especially scientific methods in farming. The other important aspect is the second green revolution. All of you are well aware about the first green revolution which took place in 1960s because of the usage of high yielding varieties in wheat. The wheat production increased substantially in 1960s. Nobel laureate Norman Borlaug was behind this green revolution. Now the Prime Minister laid emphasis on second green revolution to be started from eastern part of the country. At the same time, Prime Minister also emphasized on quality of seeds, quality of water and quantity of fertilizer and farmers should cultivate with scientific methods in agriculture and the Prime Minister also laid emphasis on apiculture. You may ask what is apiculture? Apiculture is rearing of bees. Please look into this picture and farmers can derive lot of benefits through apiculture also. Prime Minister emphasized the need for apiculture at least in one district in each state. Right friends, so look into the next issue. Centrally sponsored schemes may come down to 30. All of you are well aware under Niti Aayog, several subcommittees are formed. One such subcommittee is headed by the Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan and this subcommittee is looking into the aspect, the rationalization of centrally sponsored schemes, whether there is any scope for reducing centrally sponsored schemes. There are at present 72 centrally sponsored schemes and committee is of the view 30 will be sufficient and they are going to recommend that 30 centrally sponsored schemes are sufficient. You may ask a question, what is meant by centrally sponsored scheme? Centrally sponsored scheme is supported fully or partially by central government for implementation and the subcommittee is going to recommend 30 schemes will be enough and out of which they are giving then as the two groups, first group includes core schemes like Mahatma Gandhi Narega, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, Mid Day Meal Scheme and in the second group, it will include optional schemes for social protection as well as social inclusion, social protection as well as social inclusion, right? Shivraj Singh Chauhan, the Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh is heading subcommittee of rationalizing centrally sponsored schemes. Look into the next issue. First, modern Anganwadi center. These Anganwadi centers, what is meant by Anganwadi center? Anganwadi center is basically to take care of nutritional requirements of 0 to 6 age group of children. 0 to 6 age group children to take care of nutritional requirements so that children should not fall into the trap of malnutrition at the same time to look into the nutritional requirements of pregnant as well as lactating mothers these anganwadi centers are established in the year 1975 integrated child development scheme or popularly known as icds was started and subsequently these anganwadi centers were started and at present there are 13 lakh anganwadi centers and government wants to modernize 4,000 Anganwadi centers under Nandghar Yojana. Under Nandghar Yojana, government wants to modernize 4,000 Anganwadi centers with the public-private partnership. Land will be given by state government and with the support of private parties. These Anganwadi centers will be modernized with all the facilities, right? And one such center was inaugurated by the Honorable Minister at Hassanpur in Haryana. Hassanpur is in Sonepad district of Haryana and first Nandghar center was opened. That is modernized Ranganwadi center was opened and you can look into these pictures. 
this shows some modernized anganwadi centers right let us look into the next one make e payments and earn income tax benefits government released draft guidelines cash usage is very high in this country in comparison to western economies usage of cash that means cash transactions are more in this country if you look into the statistical figures cash to gdp ratio is 13% cash to gdp ratio is 13% and in advanced economies it ranges from around 2 to 8% government wants to increase e transactions the advantage of e transactions is basically black money can be curtailed the basic advantage of e transactions is black money can be curtailed and government released draft guidelines and as per the guidelines if you ensure more e transactions if you ensure more e transactions you will have income tax benefits at the same time the merchants or shopkeepers who will ensure certain percentage of e transactions they will also have tax benefits tax benefits will be there for individuals and at the same time benefits will be there for the merchants or shopkeepers also that means to increase number of digital transactions government released draft guidelines in a nutshell if you want me to tell what is the crux of these guidelines or you incentivize e transactions and this incentivize cash transactions give incentives when e transactions are made and this incentivize cash transactions that means by this way e transactions can be increased and subsequently black money can be reduced government is taking several steps in recent times to reduce black money or to prevent black money to come into the organized financial system this is one more such step right these are the draft guidelines given by the government right friends look at the world events terror attacks on fridays in three continents tunisia tunisia is in northern africa tunisia basically tourism is their main source of income 15% of their income comes from tourism and 13% of people are engaged in tourism sector at a tourist resort at the sosse in tunisia gunmen open fire and around 38 tourists mostly belonging to britain died and this incident occurred few months after an incident on national museum in tunisia this is in africa when you look at asia kuwait there was major incident at imam sadiq mosque one of the shiite mosques in the country around 26 killed and out of the 26 killed two are from uttar pradesh in india and kuwait is predominantly sunni population but it has got a substantial percentage of a shia population also and the terrorists want to divide these two communities in kuwait right look into the third incident in france attackers stormed usa owned chemical factory near line around 40 km from line in france and they decapitated one person what is meant by decapitation decapitation is nothing but separating head from the body is a decapitation they decapitated one person and this incident occurred in france don't forget few months ago there was an attack on the charlie hebdo magazine office in paris in france so three incidents in three continents on one single day created panic across the world 
look into the next event attack on afghanistan parliament in front of afghanistan parliament one car bomb exploded subsequently six terrorists tried to enter parliament building but the afghan forces chased them and ultimately all the six terrorists died six terrorists as well as the suicide bomber and two civilians killed here and this incident occurred when afghan president was introducing his nominee for the defense minister inside parliament and luckily nothing happened inside parliament right look into the next one european union launched operation against migrant traffickers all of you are well aware because of the situation in middle east as well as north african countries several people are migrating to italy and greece and now european union came to the conclusion that it is better to destroy the unseaworthy boats as well as the human trafficking is to be prevented that's why surveillance was started by european union because of this migration worst affected countries are greece and italy please look into this picture greece and italy are just close to northern africa and after crossing mediterranean sea people are entering greece or italy and these two countries are feeling the brunt of this mass exodus from middle east as well as north african countries right look into the next issue same sex couples have a right to marry anywhere in the country says the supreme court of usa in the united states it gave two landmark judgments during the week first one is same sex couples have right to marry anywhere in the country as on date some states have got laws against same sex marriages and some states have got laws for same sex marriages but as per this supreme court 5 to 4 decision now same sex couples can marry anywhere in the country this is a victory for lgbt activists right look into the next issue us supreme court upheld the affordable care act this is a victory for barack obama and this law was signed on march 23 2010 that means what is the meaning of this obama care law obama care law means all americans should have insurance all americans should have health insurance but if someone is not able to pay health insurance it should be subsidized so as to make it affordable all the americans as per obama care law all the americans should have health insurance if someone is not able to pay then subsidy should be given so as to make insurance affordable it is moral victory for barack obama and supreme court ratified obama care look into economy events softbank corporation bharti enterprises all of you are well aware softbank masayoshi son is the founder of softbank softbank is a telecommunication giant in japan not only that bharti of india all of you are well aware sunil bharti mittal is the founder of bharti enterprises then foxconn foxconn is based in taiwan so these three companies came together and formed a joint venture to generate 20000 megawatt of solar power to generate 20000 megawatt of solar power please don't forget india's target up to 2022 is 1 lakh megawatt of solar power and now these three giants one of taiwan the other one of japan third one of india came together to form joint venture to generate 20000 megawatt of solar power and for this investment will be 20 billion dollars investment will be 20 billion dollars and let us hope government to achieve the target by 2022 look into the next one oil glut for consecutive five quarters oil glut for the past five quarters world is surplus with oil 
world is surplus with oil that's why oil prices reduced as per the international energy agency you may ask where is international energy agency international energy agency is the intergovernmental autonomous body of 29 nations based in paris and as per its recent report five quarters for the past five quarters world is surplus with oil and what is the main reason opec what is opec organization of the petroleum exporting countries it is a 12 nation group headed by saudi arabia opec is not reducing the production opec is not reducing the production opec is headed by saudi arabia and because of this decision now world is surplus with oil for the past 5 quarters why opec is not reducing their supply because they may lose market share in the world the reprehension is they may lose market share if they reduce the production then shale drillers in united states of america may be benefited shale drillers from united states of america may be benefited that is their apprehension and if sanctions against iran goes away or if sanctions against iran are liberalized in near future then this problem may aggravate right friends look into the next one sebi relaxed norms for startups to raise funds for the startups startup what is meant by startup startup means a new company which is coming up for them accessing finance is very difficult because of the stringent laws in our country many startups are getting funding from foreign countries because of the stringent laws in this country many startups are getting funding from foreign countries so as to prevent that sebi came up with liberalized norms for the technology startups they came up with institutional trading platform or itp they came up with institutional trading platform and this platform is for the startups and several rules are liberalized you can go through this ppt in addition to the startups several changes were made by sebi and the major changes are e ipos mandatory from 1st january 2016 e ipos are mandatory from 1st january 2016 and aspa is also made mandatory from 1st january 2016 aspa means application supported by blocked amount that means when you are investing in shares when the shares are allotted then only your money will go away till such time your money will earn interest and it will be in your account only and they have made several changes minimum market capitalization for going for follow on public offer that means a company to issue further shares minimum market capitalization should be 1000 crores only and to issue shares to the existing shareholders that is called rights issue to issue shares to the existing shareholders then market capitalization should be 250 crores only so these are the changes recently made by sebi raguram rajan cautions against competitive monetary policy that means for the past several years several advanced economies are keeping interest rates at the near zero level they are not raising interest rates second thing is several countries are resorting to asset buying programs or bond buying programs what is bond buying program they purchase bonds from market and increase liquidity into the system because of these two things emerging markets like india are affected emerging markets like india are affected and second thing is because of this competitive monetary policy growth is shifting from one country to other country real growth is not increasing in the world this is cautioned by raghuram rajan when he was addressing london business school recently Look into the games and sports. Satnam Singh Bhamara is the first Indian to be drafted into National Basketball Association affiliate teams. That means Satnam Singh Bhamara was 
picked up by Dallas Mavericks a professional basketball team based in Dallas and which is also the member of National Basketball Association so Satnam Singh Bhamra is the first indian to achieve this feat he is from punjab and for the past 5 years he is being trained at the IMG Academy right friends look into the next issue SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket explodes SpaceX promoted by Elon Musk promoted by Elon Musk and it is a private space agency it was carrying food supplies to international space station international space station is in low earth orbit and three people are at present in international space station and this falcon 9 rocket was carrying food supplies to international space station and immediately 3 minutes after take off uh, this exploded so please don't forget this uh, spacex is a privately held space organization please don't forget spacex is private space organization promoted by elon musk look into the last event of the week us department of defense is the single largest employer in the world in the world US Department of Defense is the single largest employer as per World Economic Forum report. What is World Economic Forum? World Economic Forum is the organization established in 1971. Klaus Schwab started this organization and it is in Switzerland. All of you are familiar with the Davos summit. Every year Davos summit is held during the winter months. This is uh, organized by this world economic forum recently they gave a report the first place of employees of one single organization has gone to united states department of defense with 32 lakh employees followed by chinese military people's liberation army with 23 lakhs followed by walmart with 21 lakhs and please don't forget india's indian railways with the 14 lakh employees at the eighth position and indian armed forces with the 13 lakh employees at the ninth position this is as per the report given by world economic forum right friends let us conclude this lecture part for 26th week please do join for news analysis and features have a nice day thank you